In this video, we're gonna show you how to replace a timing belt kit with a water pump on your Subaru Outback. This will be located behind the timing cover. Let's get started. We're gonna remove the three Phillips plastic clips. Spin them. You may need to hold the outside as you do this. Get them in the unlocked position and pull them out. There's one more in the back here. One clip right here. And there's gonna be a 12 millimeter bolt right here. Go over and do this same process on the other side. There's two plastic clips in the middle of the shield. Using a pair of clip removal pliers, remove the clips. Hold onto the shield as you drop this last one. And remove the splash shield. Using a Phillips screwdriver, we're gonna remove the petcock from the bottom of the radiator. Make sure you have a collection bucket under you, fluid is going to come out. To make the radiator drain faster, we're going to remove the radiator cap. You can hear the coolant start to rush out. Once the radiator is done draining, reinstall the drain plug into the bottom of the radiator. Using a 10 millimeter wrench, loosen the negative terminal. Remove the negative battery terminal, put it to the side. Using a pair of clip pliers, remove the two plastic clips for the air cowl. Remove the air cowl. Using a pair of pliers, remove the upper radiator hose clamp. Pinch it, pull it back. Pull the hose off of the radiator. Pull this up and to the side. Using a trim tool, remove the six clips for your grill trim. Four on top, two in the back. Should be one right here, ours was stolen. We're gonna pull up on the grill and remove the trim. Remove the overflow hose from the radiator. I'm gonna stick it into the reservoir. Push on this tab on the side and push the coolant bottle back. Pushing on the tab will unlock it. Pull straight back. Lift up and remove the overflow bottle. Remove the fan connectors on either side of the radiator. We're gonna lift up on this tab and pull out. Remove the connector. Do the same thing on the other side. Using a pair of pliers, we're gonna squeeze the lower radiator clamp, slide it back. Remove the lower hose off of the radiator. Be sure you have a bucket under you. There may be some fluid in here. We're gonna take it off slowly. Using a pair of pliers, pinch the clamps going to the transmission cooler.
slide the clamp back, remove the hose, If you use a pair of pliers to help you remove the hose, be very careful. These hoses can rip. I'm sure you have a collection bucket under you. Do the same thing on the other side. Pull the clamp back. Remove the hose. Using a 12 millimeter socket, remove the two bolts holding the brackets for the radiator. There's one on either side. Remove the two radiator brackets. Remove the radiator and fan assembly. Using a trim tool, pop the two clips on the top of the trim. Remove the trim piece. Using an eight millimeter socket, we're gonna remove the clamp for the upper radiator hose. These are usually spring clamps. You should just have to pinch it, pull it back, and remove the hose. Ours was swapped for this hose clamp. Once the clamp is loose, Remove the hose. You don't have to remove this hose. You could just twist it up out of the way. We're gonna remove it and just give ourselves the extra space. Remove the two O2 sensor connectors. Push on this tab on the top, pull straight back. Do the same thing on this one, except the lock is in the back. Pull these cables down out of the way. Using a 15 millimeter, we're gonna take the tension off of the belt. Remove the belt from the pulleys. You can let off the tension. We're gonna fully remove our belt. Using a 14 millimeter socket, remove the three bolts for the wishbone. One more on the bottom. Remove the wishbone. Using a 22 millimeter socket on an impact tool, we're gonna remove the crank bolt. When removing the crank bolt, Watch the back of your tool. Be sure it doesn't crash into the AC condenser. Remove the crank bolt. Remove the crank pulley. Using a 10 millimeter socket, we're gonna remove all of the bolts around the timing covers. This bolt is rounded off for us, so we're gonna use a twist off socket to remove it. Same thing with this one.
remove the timing cover, pull straight out, remove the cover, remove the timing cover, pull straight out. The gasket may try to stay on the motor. Just peel this off as you pull off the cover. If your timing marks on your cam sprockets are faded, it's a good idea to highlight these using a white paint or any marker you can find. You can see on the other side, we still have our white timing mark that is highlighted. We're gonna do the same thing on the cam sprocket. We're gonna find that timing mark, put a bit of paint, There's one more timing line on the back of the sprocket. You can mark this as well. Right above our crank sprocket, on this crank sensor, there's gonna be this little indent right here. This is our timing mark for our crank sprocket. We're gonna put a bit of paint there as well. We're going to use an old axle nut as a spacer for our crank bolt. We're going to install the crank bolt through our axle nut, snug the bolt down. Using our 22 millimeter socket, we're going to spin the crankshaft sprocket clockwise all the way around until that white mark on the sprocket meets up with the white mark right under the crank sensor. When you do this, you need to make sure that when you line up the crank sprocket, the cam sprockets are lined up as well. Get those two marks lined up as best as you can. We can see that our crank sprocket marks are lining up. Now we come look at the right cam. And you can see that this white mark is lined up with the slot in the timing cover. And on the left cam, this white mark is going to line up with the seam in the case right here. Using a 14 millimeter socket, we're going to remove the timing belt tensioner. Remove the tensioner. There is a washer on the back. Make sure you grab that. Using a 14 millimeter socket, we're gonna remove the three idler pulleys. Using a strap wrench around our crank pulley, we'll use a 17 millimeter socket and break the cam bolt free. These cam bolts can get pretty stuck on. You may need to use heat. Once you have the bolt loose, go ahead and remove it. We're gonna pull the crank pulley straight off. These are keyed in place. There's only one way they can go on. Using a flat blade screwdriver, we're gonna go in between the seal. You don't wanna be riding straight on the shaft. You can get right in between the seal. Now we're gonna slowly pull out. Remove the seal. I'm gonna wrap a screwdriver in a shop rag. We're gonna go, we're gonna try and clean out where the seal came from, get any old oil or dirt out. I'm gonna take a bit of clean engine oil on my finger. 
and wipe it on this inside part of the seal. Get the seal started. Get it started nice and square. We're going to use a socket to go around and tap the seal in. Go around and get the seal flush with this face. You have to go in just a slight bit more right here. Install the crank pulley. Be sure it lines up. Install the bolt. Install the strap wrench or your holder tool. Torque the cam bolt to 57.5 foot pounds. Since our cam jumped forward during removing the pulley, we're going to pull that back now, bring it back into time. I recommend using a wrench while doing this. This is loaded both ways. Right at this point it has a lot of tension so it'll want to spring one way or another. If you use a ratchet you can get it right here and then it'll jump this way and there's nothing you can do because your ratchet will just freely go. Do the same thing on the other side. We're going to remove the crank pulley bolt. Using a puller, we put two bolts into the threaded holes on the crank sprocket. Now we're going to pull it off. You may not need to use a puller. Our crank sprocket was just pretty stuck. Remove the crank sprocket, remove the crank seal. Same as with the cam seals, we're going to get in between the seal and the shaft, pop it out. Right here is that little lip that we're looking for, trying to get inside of there and then down in. Using a rag wrapped around a screwdriver, we're going to go through and we're going to clean up inside of where the seal sits. I'm going to get any old oil or dirt out. With some clean engine oil on my finger, we're going to roll it on the inside of the seal. We're also going to put it on the outside. Install the seal. Get it started nice and square. We're going to use a block of wood and a small hammer and tap this seal into place.
going to use a 36 millimeter socket to help install the seal. You're going to put it around the outside edge and slowly tap it in square. Install the seal, make sure it's nice and flush. I'm going to clean up anything around it. Using a piece of emery cloth, clean the snout. I'm going to put an extremely light skim coat of grease on this shaft. This will help keep the corrosion down in between the sprocket and the shaft. So next time, if there is, the sprocket should just come right off. Install the sprocket. The sprocket is keyed and can only go on one way. Push it all the way down. Using a 10 millimeter socket, remove the two bolts for the thermostat cover. Sure, you have your collection bucket under you. Even though we drain the coolant, there still may be some in the engine. Remove the bolts, remove the thermostat cover. I'm going to use a flat blade screwdriver to help me pry out this thermostat. Remove the thermostat. Using an eight millimeter socket, we're gonna loosen the clamp on the coolant hose going to the side of the water pump. Loosen the clamp, pull it back. Remove the hose off of the water pump. I'm gonna use a pair of pliers on this hose. I'm gonna be very careful when I grab it. I'm just gonna twist it on the fitting You want to be very careful if you do this. It's very easy to rip these hoses with these pliers. Once I get it to wiggle, I'll pull it straight off. Using a 10 millimeter socket, we're going to remove the water pump bolts. There's one hidden in this cavity right here. With all of the bolts out, we'll remove our water pump. We're gonna go through and clean our water pump mating surface. I'm just gonna do one big wipe first. Then we'll use a razor blade or a light abrasive and clean the surface. Install the rubber side gasket onto the water pump. Install the gasket onto the water pump. We're going to take two bolts, put it through the water pump, through the gasket. This is going to help keep our gasket in place as we're installing the water pump. Install the water pump into the vehicle. If 
Get the bolt started for the water pump. Double check, be sure the gasket is still in place. Go around and install all of the bolts. We're going to go through and snug down all of our bolts. Torque the water pump bolts to 8.9 foot pounds, going around in a circle counterclockwise starting at this bolt. We're gonna go around one more time, going to 8.9 foot-pounds. We recommend replacing your thermostat when doing the timing belt. Here's our new thermostat. We're going to install our gasket onto it. Install the thermostat into the vehicle. Be sure that the jiggle pin is on top. Install the hose onto the water pump. Pull the clamp forward. We'll snug it back down. Install the thermostat cover. Get the bolt started. Get the bolt snug. Torque the thermostat bolts to 8.9 foot-pounds. Install the tensioner. Torque the bolt to 29 foot-pounds. Install the idler pulley. Get the bolt started by hand. Snug it down. Torque it to 29 foot-pounds. Install the timing belt. I'm gonna line up that yellow line with our mark. I'm gonna use this paper clip just to help me hold the belt in place. We're gonna go down around the tensioner. Up and over. Get our crank sprocket lined up, making sure our timing line is lining up. Going under the tensioner, we're gonna have to slightly pull the tensioner up with our belt. Line our belt up on the top. Make sure that timing mark lines up. Right here you can see there's a little bit of oil that just got on here. If you have this happen, you want to clean this off as fast as possible. Make sure you're very thorough about it. Make sure no oil got on the belt. I'm going to use one more of those paper clips right on top of there just to hold the belt for me. We're going to grab our cogged idler. We're going to put a 14 millimeter socket on a short extension. Install that onto the bolt. 
This is what we're going to use to help us install this pulley. We're going to pull the belt down and over. Work the bolt to 29 foot-pounds. We're going to install our final idler pulley using the same method as the geared pulley. Get the bolt installed. Torque the bolt to 29 foot-pounds. We're going to remove our paper clips, remove the pin from the tensioner. We're going to reinstall our crank bolt. We're going to check our timing on our motor. We're going to go around twice with our crankshaft. We're going to put this white mark back up to meet. At this point, our white marks on the cams should line up with their timing marks. However, the yellow marks on the belt will not line up anymore. These yellow marks are only for setting timing. After that, they're null void. When turning the motor, you only want to go clockwise, never go counterclockwise. We've gone around two times. We have our crank mark set on our timing mark. Now we'll look at our cams, be sure they're lining up with their timing marks. This cam's good. And so is this one. Remove the crank bolt. We're gonna use a clean rag and clean the inside of our timing cover. If you use a cleaning solution while cleaning this timing cover, be sure that your cleaning solution is safe for plastics. We're going to do the same thing on the small cover. Just go through with a clean rag, wipe it all up. Be sure that your gasket is installed around the timing cover. There's another little one on the bottom. Install the timing cover. Install the bolts for the timing cover. We have a non-shanked bolt going into the left hole next to the oil filter. Install the left timing cover. Install the bolts. We're going to use all flat non-shanked bolts for all three of these. I'm going to go around and snug down all of the bolts for both covers. We'll go around and torque them after. Torque the timing cover bolts to 3.7 foot-pounds.
install the wishbone, get the bolt started. Snug the bolts down. Torque the wishbone bolts to 27 foot-pounds. We're going to put a thin coat of grease on the inside of our crank pulley. Install the crank pulley. Make sure it's on the keyway. It shouldn't be able to rotate forward or backward. It should be locked in place. Install the crank pulley bolt. Torque the crank pulley bolt to 37 foot-pounds. With the bolt torqued at 37 foot-pounds, we're gonna go an additional 55 degrees. Install the belt. Using a wrench, we're going to take the tension off the tensioner pulley. Get our belt fully seated. Going around on all the pulleys, making sure it's sitting correctly. Make sure it's in all of the grooves and sitting flat on the pulleys where it should sit flat. Install the O2 sensor connectors. Push until you hear a click. If you don't, give it a pull. Make sure it's locked on. Do the same thing on this one. Install the radiator and fan assembly. Drop it into those lower grommets. Once it's dropped in, you won't be able to move it side to side. Install the brackets on top of the radiator. Pull the radiator back. Get the bolt started. Snug down the bracket bolts. Install the fan connector. Push until you hear a click. If you don't, give it a pull. Make sure it's locked on. There's a plastic stay on this connector that connects right to this ear. Ours is broken. Do the same thing on the other side. Install the upper radiator hose. Install the clamp over the radiator, snug it down. Pinch the clamp, pull it back to its original position. Make sure it's in a unlocked state. Give it a pull, make sure it's locked on. Install the overflow bottle. Be sure you line up this bottom pin with that bracket. Drop into place. We're gonna tilt the reservoir forward towards this hook. And we're gonna pull it into this back. 
locking it into place. Grab the coolant hose, attach it to the radiator. Install the trim piece. Get it under the front grill. Install the clips. There should be one more here. Ours is missing. Install the intake cowl. Install the two front clips. Install the belt trim. Install the clips. Remove the cap from the radiator. We're gonna pull our oil cooler line down. Install it into the radiator bracket. Work it over, get it started. installed onto the pipe. There's one more bracket for our hose on the bottom of the radiator. Get it installed into that. Pinch the clamp, get it over the fitting. Do the same thing on the other side. Remove the cap, install the hose, snug down the clamp. These should be pinch clamps. You should pinch this, pull it over the fitting, lock it back down. Install the lower radiator hose. Make sure it's fully seated. Pinch the clamp. Pull it back to the original position. Install the splash shield up into place. Get the two middle clips started. Push the splash shield up. Install the bolt. Install the three clips on the side. One more in the back. And then the big one on the bottom. Do the same thing on the other side. Install the negative battery terminal. Snug the terminal down. With a coolant funnel set up on top of our radiator, we're going to fill our radiator with coolant. With our radiator full, we are going to run the car until we have no more bubbles coming out of our reservoir. One more place you can check for your coolant being bled is these two hoses on the firewall. While you're running your car, have the heat on full blast. And when these two hoses 
are about the same temperature and you have no bubbles coming out, you're good to go. Once we have our coolant bled, I'm gonna squeeze this top radiator hose to push a little bit of fluid through here, just so when we take the funnel off, it doesn't spill. Stick the stopper in. Pull the funnel off. I'm gonna open up our overflow tank. If this is not to the max line, we're gonna fill it to the max. Any extra coolant can go back in the coolant bottle. Install the radiator cap and you're good to go. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.